Hey guys, so here's my very first experience with the Pico EMP. It's basically a fault injection via some high induction into, in this case, a microcontroller that has the lock bit set and I try to unlock it to read its firmware. I flashed a custom firmware onto it. Let's maybe try to get it here, which does light up this LED in red or orange if nothing happened but if something is glitched or some code execution is handled wrong it will light up in orange and green so it will look a bit different. This right now is the NXP LPC2384 and this has this chip has a whole series of course i'm just using this right now as the target and before that i also tried um, to glitch it via the chip whisperer directly on the vcc power rails but it turned out that the brownout detection on this chip is just insanely fast so it's basically like um, in 5 or 10 nanoseconds it will trigger, so no glitching possible for me at least in that time space. And so the next way is now to get external glitch. So and here we can see the signals. Basically the blue line is the trigger signal for the Pico EMP. So every time this one goes low. Uh, the Pico EMP will fire its uh, impulse and here on the top we have the output of the chip and its reset line. So it's not the reset into the microcontroller, it's what goes out of it. So we can clearly see if the brownout detection um, fires or what else is going on inside of the chip in connection of course to the um, LED status. And if, for example, I'm moving around the um, yeah, inductor above it, we can see that if I just move it barely and push it into the chip, that the yeah, reset line does trigger. So in this case, it's basically a too high induction load into it. And yeah, if I let go of it again, and move it around a bit, you can see the signal is good again, which basically tells us a good region already on where to try to inject a fault. And by now, really like moving it around above the chip and its position, the goal is to find a position where the LED turns another color. This can also be done via like a 3D printed well, not a 3D printer, a 3D printer itself. So you have like a motor driven um, X, Y and maybe even Z station. So you can get statistics of where the best position is to inject this fault. But what I'm doing right now, just to get started, is basically like moving it a little bit, taking a look at the scope of the, yeah, um, Reset line triggers, so then I need to move back a little bit again there because the trigger was too too hard, I would call it. And yeah, I'm basically moving around and waiting for the LED to turn green, yellowish. And after this first um, like uh, check is done, so if the LED really does turn green, we know the glitch is possible and then it can also be done inside of the bootloader. It is known that the bootloader has one specific check of the flash memory where it will check if the yeah, boot uh, or the, the debug lock is set or not. And if we can glitch at that specific moment, then the yeah, debug interface will be open and everything can be dumped out of the chip. It's quite the simple check. And 
easy to bypass, just not if the um, brownout detection resets the chip before you can even yeah, glitch that instruction at all. And also this tip is really not the best for this job, but it's just the only inductor I had laying around. So um, after wandering around a bit above the chip, we can finally see here that the LED did turn the greenish color. And this does not only mean that the setup works per se, so that the proof of concept is there, but also since it took so long, it's maybe best to, of course, get a better tip so you have a more precise injection and also to do this in yeah, a 3D printing environment to have reproducible results as this setup is basically like super crude right now. What now can also be done is basically like... Um, yeah, triggering is a reset by placing it somewhere else. So like that you can see the LED turned red again. And I will have a very hard time finding the right spot yet again. If the focus would be right. And yeah, this can basically like take again a few minutes, which is not the intended length for the bootloader to be glitched. So yeah, the next steps will now be to look further into getting a more reliable setup. But based on this proof of concept, we can say the chip itself is yeah, glitchable via EMFI. And yeah, that is definitely way a better result uh, than with glitching the VCC line. And yeah, stay tuned for more updates.